The cover of One Piece chapter 999 is perfect. It is a recreation of One Piece chapter 100, that cover page, and it's one half of it. So in chapter 1000, you get the other half. So I think it's amazing and poetic and a way to tie things together perfectly. I'm sure Oda is going to do the same for chapter 1000 in regards to how it relates to chapter 100, but we're not here to talk about that, okay? We're not going to waste any time because there's so much to cover in this chapter. Seriously, it was jam packed, and I really think this is a contender for one of the best chapters of the year. Last chapter felt like an ace flag flashback was possible but there were so many ways it could go does Oda give us more of the flying six as you reveal the devil fruit forms last chapter nope he went right into the ace stuff and i loved it and i would love it just as much if you subscribe to the channel for more content like this and join me on this journey as we talk about the one piece greatness now we jumped right into it we started off with ace and Yamato, which was great as this has been foreshadowed for a while. We had known about Yamato meeting and fighting Ace, but it was about when Oda was going to show it to us. And I believe he picked the perfect time as this chapter, I think, other than providing wonderful information, it transitioned really well. It seamlessly went from scene to scene without it feeling that way. I love when that's the case because it's sometimes difficult when you feel the jump and then it could impact your immersion. That was not the case here. Ace went to Wano for Kaido's head. And as we know, he was hell bent on chasing the top tiers. Yamato lets him know that Kaido was not there and the top dogs were out as well. And this was a very unique way in which Oda chose to save Ace from himself because Ace was commending Yamato's strength, but there's no way she's stronger than her dad. I don't think she's close. So Ace back then would have been annihilated. We've talked time and time again about Ace and the issues he's had with his father, the Pirate King Gold Roger, or rather Gold D Roger. In this chapter, Yamato says father and Ace instantly picks up on it. I like how literally from one scene to the other, Ace goes from destructive high head to a warm flame of hope based on perspective. He's condemned for the destruction, but then we seize for the children who had been abducted and Ace freed them. I believe this is after his moments with Tama as she was in Wano, so Ace went to save other children as well as to defeat Kaido. I really enjoyed that dynamic as these two were of course different characters, these two being Yamato and Ace, and this was obviously with their actions and motivations, but they had a common thing, their disdain for their fathers. Ace hated his dad due to the struggles his infamy brought about, Yamato hated hers due to her affection for Odin, and her dad just being a bad dude who abused her and trapped her on the island of Onigashima. I would probably hate mine too. Ace's reaction to Yamato showing that she had hopes and dreams as well was priceless. It felt like Ace was trying to help her find her way and knew the correct buttons to push based on his experiences. By the end of it all, it was just them connecting and almost wishing they could partner up. I would have liked to see some dialogue of Ace saying, I'll help you get them off, but at that point, Ace was a fairly new pirate and the advanced application of Ryo was something he obviously has no knowledge of and that was the only way he could have broken Yamato loose. This meeting almost reminded me of Luffy and Shirohoshi as she had heard so many things about the surface and Luffy was there to confirm and promise she would see them someday. This chapter also made the world feel alive. The mention of my boy Cavendish and of course our faves Law, Kid and Beige. But one thing I would like to point out is Ace hit the nail on the head but of course as the audience we have some hindsight. This was two years before Luffy set out on his journey so these pirates were already making waves then and still Luffy has accomplished more than we can say all of them we can say all of them combined in a fraction of the time. Ace was not lying about this one. Luffy was special and he certainly did stir up a storm. The damaged statue was a reminder to Kaido by Ace that he was to return, but it feels like it was for Yamato as well, to not only have some hope but to remain herself and not to lose sight of her dreams. It's funny when Momo heard Kaido was Yamato's dad because think about all that he has experienced because of that thing being Kaido. Of course he would be terrified. This was hilarious but Yamato tried to make things better by stating she hated her dad and that she was Odin but she only made things more confusing. She has this naive nature but it's adorable because you understand that this country is all that she knows. She is literally ignorant but it's cute. We had connected reveals in different scenes which tied together in which Yamato was telling Shinobu and Momo about Ace and Nami was telling Tama about Luffy. I really wanted more of that Nami and Tama conversation because Nami honestly has been in Tama's shoes. As a very young girl someone important was taken away from her her, and she's always had a soft spot for Lost and her children. We saw that in Punk Hazard. We skipped to inside the live dome floor to see Marco having a quote unquote battle with the men he saved as he wasn't really trying but I thought it was really insane that Queen was ordering around the men that he was willing to let die but Marco then proceeds to take Zora to the rooftop with Zora having a reaction that I found hilarious as it was one of a man that was having the time of his life. It was honestly pretty wholesome. Marco's flashback at that moment caused a lot of discussion though as we see the Whitebeard Pirates discussing Odin's death. Kiku points out that they found 
found out several years after, Marco while eating a pineapple of course, lets us know that it's something that they considered numerous times, but the casualties would be so much, so they always decide not to. I'm sure he communicates with his top brass, but ultimately it is his decision. Ace of course then asks to go on his own, which Whitebeard addressed his arrogance, stating he wanted to take down someone Odin couldn't, because Whitebeard of course would know about Odin's strength. We then have some more dialogue from Blackbeard, which was amazing, because Blackbeard is saying Ace wants to do it because he wants to take out a big shot. Marco says no, that's not why he's doing it, but it's funny because this is coming from Blackbeard. We know Blackbeard, his goal was to take out some big shots to get what they have, one of the big shots being his own captain. Just amazing dialogue, right? But there are some qualms that people had. For me, Izo is probably the character I have the most issue with. Izo being raised as a subordinate of Odin and having a sibling in Wano ever so casually told Ace, hey, if you ever decide to go, I would follow you. Izo. That is your hometown. How could you be so nonchalant about this? Whitebeard making the decision not to go will be addressed in full as it is a lot to dissect, but just know that I still respect Whitebeard as being a leader is never easy. It mostly seems that King and Queen are trying to kill Momo to end the game. They feel like if he falls, all is lost for the Alliance, which they may be correct. Queen tries to shoot Marco to no avail, but we see a rifle come out of his mouth. I mean, this further confirms to me that Queen has worked with some of the top scientists that we know of because I doubt that came from his fruit, right? It could just be a regular rifle and because of his fruit, he could hold it in place, but either way, it's freaky. Momo's and Tama's reaction to the news about Ace was priceless because they're both so innocent and they had no idea how much Luffy had gone through and how much he sacrificed. I mean, this may bring about a newfound respect, but it's not like that was lacking in the first place. But I mean, this is another level. Being the brother of Ace and how much Ace and his father impacted Momo and Tama is a great tie-in. I mean, Yamato mentioned Luffy being a D while taking out the journal, but I wonder how much is really in there. What could Odin have known about the D? I mean, they found the One Piece, but either way, I'm really excited for that damn journal. We get to a major part of the chapter if not the major part of the chapter where Kaido and Big Mom are waiting for Luffy. Just sitting there. And some of us speculated that Kaido and Big Mom could end up fighting each other, but that seems far-fetched right now because they're actually having a civil discussion. Big Mom tells Kaido to keep Nico Robin alive and then Kaido mentions Pudding. I mean, could Pudding truly be able to read the Poneglyphs? I mean, could Pudding truly be able to read the Poneglyphs? She must be able to as it has been referenced twice now in the story. They talked about where Kaido would drop Onigashima and it seems like the capital, as suspected, is the destination. We then get a huge bombshell. And this is by Big Mom, the fact is, Big Mom on the day rocks fell, gave Kaido the fish fish no me. The legendary version as said in the official, which more than likely means mythical, so I don't know why the change there. There's a story of fish carp to explain Kaido's fruit as most are confused how he could be a dragon while being a fish, but this goes back to the Dragon Gate legend. And this is in Chinese mythology. The story describes thousands of koi fish relentlessly swimming upstream the Yellow River current. At the end of their journey, they encounter a massive waterfall. Most of the koi give up and let the river's current carry them away, a few persist and carry on trying to reach the top of the waterfall. A single koi reaches the top, the gods recognize this koi for his determination and bestow upon it the gift of transformation into a dragon. Because of its bravery, the koi is also oftentimes associated with samurai. This could be Kaido's devil fruit, the koi koi fruit. And there were hints throughout the story and it shows Kaido and his tattoo and the koi fish. I also love how koi is the way to ride up the waterfall to enter Wano and there's also the mention of Chinese carp in Oda's notes for Wano in volume 7 74, and carp to dragon is also circled. This was a master plan, and Oda is a genius. But holy crap, Kaido has that fruit, and they're still focused on the One Piece. I really don't know what's gonna happen, but seeing Big Mom and Kaido waiting there is so hype. I desperately need chapter 1000. This is going to be amazing. But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about all this? Kaido's devil fruit, Big Mom and Kaido working together to find the One Piece, and they're actually working together. Whitebeard's decision, even Zoro getting to the rooftop. There's so much going on in this chapter after guys give me your thoughts make sure to like the video if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this this is another chance follow me on twitter at brogody ace follow me on instagram at brogody.ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much you guys like and subscribe and i shall catch you in the next one peace I start doubting me, I felt lost.